بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. In this short lesson, I will go over how to use an Arabic root-based dictionary and uh, the dictionaries that we will use as examples are Hanswer and some other classical Arabic dictionaries such as Lisan al-Arab, al-Sihah, Maqayis al-Lugha, al-Ubab al-Zakhir, and al-Qamus al-Muhit, as much as time permits. <clears throat> so here is a Hanswer online searchable. So this is a Hanswer dictionary searchable online. You can just search for it online. If you need the link, it's ijtal.net search for online searchable Hanswer, and you'll get something like this. And what you do is you just click anywhere on the screen. So I'm gonna click here. And you enter the al-fi'l al-madi, the past verb. So let's say I am searching for shariba. So I'll enter sheen raba. And of course, you need to have your Arabic keyboard enabled. And so I click okay. And it gives me this uh, page on Shariba. So let's go through this. Here it says Shariba. And of course, there's no Fatah Kasra Dhamma written here. So how do you know if there's a Kasra here? Well, you know from the rule that Al Madi uh, for Hua begins with a Fatah. So I know she has a Fatah. And um, then the Ain letter, which is the second root letter, is the Ra, and the third root letter is the Ba. So again, the what they call Fa Ain Lam. The Fa represents the first root letter, which is the Sheen here, and the Ain uh, represents the second root letter, which is the Ra, and the Lam, which represents the third root letter is ba so the three root letters here are sheen raba so how did i know it was shari ba i know that it begins with a fatah and ends with a fatah but how did i know the haraka of the ra that's where you need the dictionary and this is form one and form one the haraka of the middle root letter is samaiya meaning that you have no way to guess it there's no rule you just have to know it from the dictionary or some other arabic source so here's the Arabic dictionary, and you can see the way Hanswer has written the S with that weird symbol on top. That's the sh sound, that's the sheen sound. And then they have a A here, which represents the fatah, so it's sha. And then the root, the root letter R, and then the I, which represents the kasra, so it's sha, ri, and then ba. So again, you have the <clears throat> A here, which represents, represents the fatah. So Hanswer uses A for fatah, I for kasra, and you for Dhamma. So this is Shariba. This is how you pronounce Al Fi'l Al Madi for Huwa, Shariba. And Arabic root based dictionaries are always based on three lettered, three letter roots. And the vast majority of words in Arabic are based off of three letter uh, roots. Some are based on four letters. So most of them are triliteral, some are quad literal. Then, okay, so we have the al-fi'l al-madi for shariba. What about al-fi'l al-mudari, the present verb? <clears throat> the present verb <clears throat> um, also has uh, the same challenge. We know the first two harakas of the present verb we, from grammar and morphology. We know the last haraka depends on the grammar. The challenge is what is the haraka of the middle root letter? To demonstrate that, um, let's switch to my Word doc and I will write this down. So uh, first let's write down the al-madi, which is shariba. The mudari is yashrabu. And we know from our study of morphology and grammar that the mudari begins with a fatha, then sukun, then this haraka, the haraka of the ra, that's what's called sama'i. 
You just have to know it from the dictionary and memorize it. It's a fatha, okay? How did I know that the, uh, the, that there is a fatha here? Again, that goes back to the dictionary. So I'm gonna switch back to the dictionary. <clears throat> In the dictionary, you see an A written here. And that's always going to be the case. The dictionary will always give you al Mali spelled out in English letters with the vowels for the Fatha Kasra Dhamma. Then for the Mudare, for the present, they will only give you the, the vowel which represents the Haraka of the middle root letter. So this A means Fatha. That's how I know. That's how I knew to put a fatha on the ra because the ra of yashrabu theoretically can have a fatha, dhamma, or kasra. And there's no way for me to know this unless it's done through sama by hearing an authority in Arabic language. And dictionary is an authority in Arabic language. And so we have fatha here. So shariba yashrabu. So we have al fail al madi <clears throat> and al fail al mudari. And again, this is for hua conjugation. That's why it's important that you complete uh, a basic introduction to Arabic grammar morphology, such as Quranic linguistics level one, where you get to complete uh, these rules that I'm talking about. Without completing these rules, it doesn't make sense to go to an Arabic root-based dictionary. This lesson assumes you've done your some basic Arabic grammar and morphology, such as Quranic Linguistics Level 1 or Ajrumiya or other surf books. Okay, so all good. We have the uh, first and most important thing done, which is find out the haraka of the middle root letter and just to emphasize the root letters are Shin, Ra, Ba. And these root letters, because there are three, this is a triliteral. And that's why I entered when I, when I uh, went to, when I did uh, the search, I entered for Shin, Ra, Ba like that. Uh, now, moving on. So we've got Al Mahdi, we've got Al Mudare. Based on Al Mahdi and Al Mudare, you can, uh, you can guess all the other conjugations for ana, nahnu, anta, anti, uh, antuma, hum, uh, antum, antunna, huwa, hiya, huma, hum, hunna, all of those 12 conjugations that we study in an introductory course in Arabic grammar and morphology and in conjugation, all of those can be guessed based on just knowing the huwa. And that's why the dictionary <clears throat> only mentions huwa. It's not going to give you all the conjugations. So huwa shariba and huwa yashrabu. So far so good. So that was the most important thing in, in, uh, in, 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 in this lesson. The next most important thing is what's written in the parenthesis. In Hansware, it's written in the parenthesis. And in classical Arabic dictionaries, it will be written... Uh, in the mansub form. So I'll explain that in just a second. So shariba, yashrabu, I got that. I got the shariba and yashrabu, I got the fail mad and fail mudari. Next thing I need to know is what is the masdar, <clears throat> okay? The masdar is very important. And mustar is, again, a mustar I talk about extensively in Quranic Linguistics Level 1. Mustar is the verbal noun. It basically, it represents an action without time. And form one master is also sama'i, meaning that it's, it's not qiyasi. I can't guess it based on a rule. It's sama'i, meaning I just have to hear it from an Arabic authority, such as a dictionary or Quran or teacher. So the master too, because I cannot guess it, the dictionary has to tell me what the master. If a dictionary doesn't tell me what a master is, it's gonna be a big problem. So all Arabic root-based dictionaries always will tell you the master and usually the master comes after al madi shariba and al mudare yashrabu and then the master now in hans where the master is written in parenthesis some words some roots have one master 
Some roots have two mustards, some have even three, some have even four, but you almost always will have one mustard at least. <clears throat> so if I look at the, 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 what's written in the parenthesis, I see shurbun and I see mashrab. So there are two mustards here, shurbun and mashrab. Notice how shurb is written with an S with that funny symbol to represent at, that it's SH and then U to represent Dhamma, and then R is for the, you know, the Ra, which is the second root letter, and then the Ba. So let me switch to my Word document. How do I write the muster? I will write it like this, Shur, Dhamma on the scene, because there's a U in Hansre, and then the Sukun, and then <clears throat> the ending, right? Ending depends on grammar. So sometimes you hear shurbun, sometimes you hear shurban, and sometimes you hear shurbin. That's grammar, right? That's, it depends on the grammatical function. All three of these words, let me put the haraka here quickly. Dhamma sukun, dhamma sukun. So all three of these words are master morphologically. In ilmu sarf, in sarf, these are masters. But in grammar, they're used in different grammatical functions. This is marfu, this is mansub, this is majrur. And you've studied marfu, mansub, and majrur in your introduction to uh, Arabic grammar. And I cover that extensive, <clears throat> extensively in my Quranic linguistic series. So what the Arabic, Arabic dictionaries will do is that they will not give you the marfu, the shurbun. They will not give you the majrur, which is shurbin. Instead, they'll say shari ba yashrabu shurban. And it kind of, it, 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 this is the pattern that they will follow <clears throat> in, in Arabic based dictionaries. They will all say shari ba yashrabu shurban. And they always give it in mansub. And that's because mustar frequently is used as maf'ul mutlaq, which is a grammatical function. And it's mansub. So that's why they use it in, they just adopted this convention. It's just a style. It doesn't have to be that way, but that's just, it just makes it easy to remember and memorize also. So coming back to Hansware, um, there are two masters, right? Um, shurbun and mashrab. Mashrab. Now, mashrab is a specific type of master. It's called masterun mimi, which I talk about in Quranic linguistics. Uh, but that's not important right now. What's important is that I've got two masters here, and that's good. I'm nice and happy. I'm ready to go. I have got my al fel al madi shariba. I got my al mudare yashrabu, and I got my master. These three words are powerful, very important, because I need them. Uh, to express myself, to understand, to analyze Quran, to appreciate the beauty of the Quran. Let's switch back to Hansware. <clears throat> and then he talks about the definition, which is to drink. And then there's another something parenthesis. There's a ha, this letter is actually ha. It's not very clear in the um, uh, text, but it is ha. Uh, and I'm trying to enlarge it, but it's not letting me. Okay, there you go. So there's a ha here. This, this letter is actually the ha. It's not very clearly written. This is also ha here. And then if he says ha and then s dot th dot, that s dot dot th dot means something. And it, what this means is you can have an object. You can have a maful bihi. You can say shari bahu. That's why this ha is written. Some verbs can have maful bihi. They are transitive, muta'addi, as they say in Arabic. Some verbs do not have maful bihi. They're intransitive or lazim in Arabic. How do I know if a verb can have a maful bihi or not a maful bihi? Again, that's sama'i. You have to know it from an authority of Arabic language. How do I know if a verb has a harful jar that comes after it? I can guess it, but my guess is not good. My intuition may not be powerful because I'm not a native Arabic speaker. And even native Arabic speakers nowadays may have lost some of their intuition because they're away from the true classical uh, Arabic. So they need the dictionary to tell you. Uh, in the dictionary, it will tell you, uh, uh, it will say something that means you can attach a ha. So I'm gonna go back to my Word document and show you how to do that. Uh, so I can say, shari bahu. That's what the dictionary is saying. When, when it says ha and then something, it says that you can do 
a maful bihi. This verb is uh, is capable of having a maful bihi. Sharibahu yashrabu. That's what it means. Dictionary uses a lot of shorthands because there's too much to write and the space is limited. So that was that. So now I know that this verb can have a maful bihi as opposed to having an harf jar or some verbs have both. And then it says to sip additional definition and then again, ha something, same thing. And then uh, he goes on to other meanings, which we don't need to go into too much. You can read them on your own. I just wanted to point out some important things. Then, okay, so that was form one, right? Shari by Yashrabu, Shurb and Mashrab, that's form one. And then you have form two represented in Roman numerals two, which is Sharraba. So that's why it's important that you study basic Arabic morphology before you come to this, um, before you go to an Arabic root-based dictionary, because they expect you to know the morphology. They expect you to know the roots, uh, how the roots work, how the patterns work. It's form two, sharraba. So I'm going to go back to my Word document, and I'm going to write down sharraba. So fa'ala. And of course, you know, sharraba, you sharribu from your morphology. If you don't know this morphology, no problem. You can study uh, any course in Arabic grammar and morphology, or you can study Quranic languages level one, and you will understand very quickly. And you can uh, also, some of this is covered in, 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 in easy introduction to Arabic. So sharraba, you sharribu means form two. And that's, that's what he's talking about in Hans Weir when you see two here. And then he's gonna talk about the meanings of form two. And again, the ha, someone, S-O means someone, S-T-H means something. You talk about the meanings. Then form three, which is sharaba, fa'ala, and then form four, ashraba, af'ala. And then sometimes you may have forms, sometimes you may not have forms. Not every root will have all 10 forms. If or hadith or classical Arabic, then you will see it here in the dictionary. He mentions two, three, four, and he just goes on and on. You can read on your, and then there's V, which of course means five. So tasharraba is form five. Tafa'al is also used. And then he has ba, harful jar, preposition with something. This shows that in form five, you can use the maful bihi directly. That's why it's indicated with the ha, or you can use with ba. Tasharrabahu or tasharraba bihi. And then he goes on to other miscellaneous nouns. Now these nouns could be masdar, shurbun. See, masdar is mentioned in the beginning, in the parentheses, but then he explains in more detail masdar. So it's, so it's the same masdar here. Shurbun, drinking, drink, or absorption. And then he goes on to other derivatives, other mushtaqatul asma, like sharbatun, fa'latun. Remember we studied an easy introduction to, um, we studied in Quranic language level one, uh, quantity specifying mustard. That's right here. That's mentioned right here. And then shurba and then sharab. All the other derivatives are mentioned here. And that's basically it. This is uh, an Arabic root based dictionary, Hanswear. And if you understand, if you, what I recommend is you get used to using Hanswear first. Once you get familiar and you're comfortable using Hanswear, then I want you to switch over to trying some of the more complicated Arabic based dictionaries. Um, now, how to tell the gender of the noun? The gender of the noun, uh, you can tell in two ways. You can do it through grammar. The grammar tells us that uh, every, fem, fe, every noun is either male or female. If it's male, you may not have a sign. If it's female, you may have three signs. The signs are tamarbuta and alif maqsura and, and alif mamduda. Those are the signs of femininity. But let's say some words like shams the sun, have no signs. How do you know? You'll go over here and he will tell you, he will mention feminine. Let's check to see if he does that. So I'm gonna to go to Shams, which is she means seen. And then it's put me to the page. Here's, uh, here's Shamasa, Yashmusu, and Shumus Master. And then um, different forms, that was form one and then form four, five, blah, blah, blah. And then, Let's see if he talks about here, yeah, right here. Shamsun, it has an F dot. If you see F dot, that means feminine. So that's how you can tell if, if something is feminine, if you're not sure. And then PL plural, which is Shumusun. 
So we are, so this is it. This is Hansware. This is how you do this. Um, let's look up another word, Fataha. Fataha. So what's the Almadi? Fataha. Fataha. And then A. What does A mean? A here means Fatah on the Mudare. Um, and uh, so that means it would be Yaftahu. And then the mustard is fathun in the parentheses, and then the meaning to open. And then ha something means that it, you can say fatahahu. That means you can have a maful bihi. And he goes on with that meaning. And then let's see if there are other forms. Here's form two to open fataha form three fataha. The fataha form five. In fataha form seven if tataha form eight. There's no form nine up that is used for fataha and then form ten is taftaha. So this is it. This is a quick introduction to Hansware. What I recommend is before you go to Arabic pay Arabic uh, dictionaries, th those tend to be a little more complicated. I recommend you get really comfortable with Hansware. And once you're comfortable with Hansware, then uh, you can go to Arabic dictionaries. And I will do another lesson, inshallah, since I'm out of time right now. I'll do another lesson for those of you who are comfortable with Hansware. I will do another lesson, inshallah, in which we can look at Lisan al Arab and Al Sihah and Maqais al Lugha and Al Qamus al Muhid and some of those other really advanced classical works, inshallah. So that was a quick introduction to how uh, you can use a simple Arabic dictionary like Hansware. As I mentioned before, I will do a more advanced lesson for those.